viewers, this is Kasturi Day. Today I am back with ICC pattern questions of this chapter, that is Laws of Motion. Okay, this part is left uh, on this chapter text portion, and then I will start with a discussion with the question answers or the, <laughs> the back questions of this chapter. Okay, so let us start with this ICC pattern questions. Um, so, first is state, uh, okay, first I, uh, for starting. Uh, before I start, I will request you to please to subscribe my channel and also uh, do ring the notification bell because as soon as a new video is uploaded, it will notify you. Okay, and uh, if you are a new viewer to my channel, please do subscribe. Okay, if you are liking the videos, press the like button, share with your friends so that they can also be benefited from these videos. And also do meditate before you start your day. So before starting our discussion, we will start with a short meditation for just one minute and then we will start with that discussion. Okay. So for starting with the meditation, just concentrate on a point of light. Think okay, so that light is coming on you, burning on the whole body. Body is becoming light. Think up with energy. State the universal law of gravitation, express its mathematical form, explain the symbol used, state the value of universal gravitation constant in the SI unit. Okay. So the answer is the law of gravitation formulated by Newton would state that the force of attraction between the two bodies, the force of attraction between the two bodies, if the two bodies are there, the attraction between the two bodies is directly proportional to the product of their masses. Whatever the mass this one has, and whatever the mass is this one has. So this, if, if you consider these two as bodies, so the product of their masses is directly proportional to the force of attraction between the bodies. But it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Distance between them. This distance between this side and this one, this one, this body. So, if you square the distance, that will be inversely proportional to the force of attraction. Okay. So, therefore, we can write F is directly proportional. F is proportional to m1 into m2 divided by r square. Okay. That means what? Directly proportional to mass, the product of their masses, and inversely proportional to the square of their distance between them. But uh, to make that uh, proportional sign, to remove the proportional sign, we need to add one constant. So that constant is G, which is known as universal gravitational constant. Okay. That is known as universal gravitational constant. The value, okay, now the uh, mathematical form of this is written as F is equal to G into M1, M2, M1 into M2 divided by R squared. That G is called the universal gravitational constant. Okay, and the value uh, state the value of uh, the universal gravitational constant is SI unit is the value of universal gravitational constant. The SI unit is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square. Okay, so, what's what is this unit in SI? It is, SI system, it is the 
fixed point value rather, not uh, uh, unit. It is the value of this unit in this unit. It says six into six, six seven in uh, six into six seven into not it's into it's the multiplication sign into ten to the power minus eleven newton meter square per meter square. Okay. So and next question is the an athlete takes three rounds of circular field of radius seven meters. If there is a circular field of radius seven meters, he takes a th uh, three rounds around this circular field. First is distance. Find its distance and displacement. Okay. Another one. Another question is why do dust particles from a carpet get removed when heated with a stick? And again, uh, the C question is, if a stone and a pencil are dropped simultaneously in vacuum from the top of the tower, which one of the two will reach the ground first and why is it so? Now, what can you say about the nature of the motion of the body if it's displacement time graph is a straight line parallel to the time axis or a straight line inclined to the time axis? So the first question we are coming to is, Takes is taking three rounds around the circular field of a circular field of seven meter radius. Five, we need to find out this distance and displacement. So first we find the displacement, a part. That is uh, the circular field, the circular field, we need to find the circumference of the circular field. Okay? So that will be equal to the formula of the circumference of the field will be equal to 2 pi r because it's a circular field. The circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. Now 2 into pi pi means 22 by 7. The value of pi and r radius is given as 7 meters. Okay. So as the person, the athlete is taking 3 rounds. So 3 into the 2 pi r. So that will give you 132 meter is the distance. Okay? But displacement is 0, right? Because he is taking, he's continuously changing his direction of motion. Okay, so because it's initial and final position and changing its position and he is coming to the same point. So that's why displacement is continuously changing his position as it is a circular field and he's coming back to the same point where he has, come, where he has started. So that's why the displacement will be. Now, why uh, when you hit a carpet the dust will come into the uh, fall below okay. it will be hitting uh, with a stick when you we can remove the dust while by hitting it with a stick how can we do so now when a carpet is hit with a stick the carpet become uh, i mean comes in motion when we hit the carpet with a stick the carpet starts moving so the carpet becomes uh, comes in motion, but the dust particles which were attached to the carpet they were still in rest, embedded in it. Okay. So initial position is where rest due to the inertia. Inertia of rest, they are still in the rest position. Okay, so they will what to, so as the carpet will move, move the dust particles will just fall uh, below. And how uh, that is how they will be removed from the carpet as they are in the field. The, I mean, they will get separated from the carpet as the carpet moves. The dust particles, as they are in the rest position, they will be getting separated from the carpet and just they will fall down on the ground due to the gravitational force of the dust particles towards the ground. So that will they will fall down. Okay. Next. So what was the question? The question was if a stone and the pencil are dropped simultaneously in a vacuum from the top of a tower, which one will reach the ground first? And why is this? So in vacuum, in, in vacuum. Both the stone and the pencil will reach the ground simultaneously since as what as the acceleration due to gravity is same on the both. 
expression due to gravity does not depend on the mass of the bodies. So, what will happen? They will, both of them will reach the ground because their pulling is same. The force of acceleration due to gravity, that is same. So, pulling the stone and pulling the pencil, that force is same without considering their masses. So, they will reach the ground simultaneously. Now, the next question is, what can you say about the nature of the motion of the body if they're displaced in time graph to the straight line parallel to the time axis or if it is inclined, the straight line to inclined to the time axis? To the now, if it is straight line parallel to the time axis, then the body is having no motion, that is, it is stationary. And if it is inclined to the time axis with an acute angle, then the motion is away from the starting point to the uniform velocity. Motion of the body is away from the starting point. It is moving away from the starting point, but it has uniform velocity because it is inclined in a acute in an acute angle. Here, next. Third question, dear Kaiser. A particle initially at rest moves with an acceleration of 5 meter per second square for 5 seconds. By the distance traveled, 4 seconds, 5 seconds, and 50 seconds. First, the body starts from rest. That means u is equal to 0. Here. Then it has an acceleration of 5 meter per second square. For first five, for five seconds, it is having an acceleration of 5 meter per second square. Now the question is, we need to find the distance traveled by that particle in the 4 seconds, in the 5 seconds, and the 50 seconds. So first, in the first First case when uh, it is four seconds. Okay. So uh, we know that the body is starting from rest. Starting from rest. So the initial velocity will be z. Now, if we use the formula s is equal to ut plus half a t squared. Okay. Therefore, s is equal to ut means u becomes zero. So t u into t becomes zero. Plus half a t squared. Half into a means 5 meter per second square. Okay. Into 4 squared for the first part. So that gives what? Oh. 4 fours are 8. Uh, 4 fours are 16. So if we cancel it by 2, that means, that means it's 8. And 8 fives are 14. So distance traveled uh, in the 4 seconds. So that is 14. Next, in the 5 seconds. Again, here initial velocity we know it's starting with zero. So first uh, ut will be equal to zero. And half a t squared means half into a is five meter per second squared and into five squared. So that, that will, will give you s is equal to 62.5 meters. Now, what is the fifth second distance travel? How much distance is traveled in the fifth second? Distance traveled by the body in the fifth second is. 5 seconds minus 4 seconds. Seconds minus 4 seconds. First 4 seconds, you must minus, we subtract it for the first 5 seconds. So what will we get? Fifth second, what is the distance? So last 5th second, what is the distance? So S, uh, 5 seconds, it is uh, 6.62.5 and the uh, this one, from rest, if it is starting from the fourth second, that is 14. So that means 22.5 meters, that will be the okay. Stone is thrown upward. Stone is thrown upward, that is against the gravity uh, in a uh, velocity or is 50, point, 50 meter per second. Okay. So initial velocity is 50 meter per second. Now find the maximum height attained by the stone and the time taken by the stone to reach back. 
the g is considered to be minus 10 meter per second square because g is against i mean it is against the gravity it is moving so it will be minus 10 meter per second so what is given? U is equal to 50 meter per second. G is equal to minus 10 meter per second square. As it is reaching a maximum height, so that here the velocity becomes a zero. Final velocity becomes zero. So V is equal to zero. So what is the height change? Okay. So we use the formula V squared is equal to U squared plus 2GH. So that gives us V squared, we know V becomes zero. So V squared is zero minus U squared. That is 50 squared plus 2 into minus 10 into h. That gives us 125 meters. Okay. 50 into 50. Okay. Sorry, this is there's a sign uh, problem here. So this will be 0, that is, will be equal to 50 squared plus 2 into 10 into h. So that means what if you uh, reverse this, uh, I mean you move this one to the side, this will become 50 square. Okay. Sorry, this will be minus 2 gh. Okay, because it is moving against the gravity. Okay. So that means it will be minus 2 gh. So that will be equal to 50 into 50 by uh, 50 into 50 is equal to 2 into 10, that is 20 into h. Because it is already minus. So minus minus, it becomes plus. So that means this will be uh, minus, okay? So that means it will be equal to 50 into 50 by 20, that will be equal to 125 meters. Okay? Now next, next we need to find the time taken. The time taken will be uh, to reach the stone, to reach back coming to the ground again. So here V is equal to U plus G because it is coming towards the ground. Okay. So here this will be minus 2 G. Okay. Now this uh, we know it's U by plus G T. So T is equal to V minus U by G. That will be equal to 0 minus 50 by minus 10. That is equal to 5 seconds. Here. Calculate the mass of the earth, assuming it to be a sphere of radius 6370 kilometer. That means it will take G is equal to, the distance radius is 6370 kilometer. G is equal to 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square. And the G, small g is equal to 9.80 meter per second square. So that will be this one. Uh, so G, uh, small g is equal to capital G M by R square or M you can see G R square by capital G. Okay. So G we know it's given as 9.80 meter per second square. Capital R is 6370 kilometers. That means equal to 6370 in the part 3 meters. And capital G, that is universal constant, that is 6.67 10 to the power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square. So putting the formula in the, I mean putting the values in the in the formula, we get uh, this one, 5.96 into 10 to the power 24. Okay. And one newton, we know one kg per uh, one kg meter per second square. Okay, so therefore, uh, the answer will be 5.96 into 10 to the power 24 kgs of the mass. The okay. uh, weight of standard mass of 1 kg, that is M1, consider it, is found to be 4.7 Newton when it is measured using a spring balance on the moon. An object of unknown mass that is N2 is attached to the same spring balance and that is found, the weight is found to be as 11.1111 Newton on the moon. What is the mass of the object on the earth? So weight is equal to mg, we know that. Okay, so M1 given as 1 kg and weight is given as 4.7 Newton. So G can be found as to be 4.7 meter per second. Okay. Now, 
on the moon. Find it. It's on the moon, not on the earth. The weight, uh, which is given as 11.11 Newton, and M2 we don't know. Okay. So for finding the M2, we get the A11.11 is equal to M2 into 4.7. So that gives us 2.36. Uh, okay, of M2, not M1. M1, we found it as 1 kg, it's already given, but M2 on the moon, that is 2.36 kg. Now, a man kicks with his foot a soccer ball initially at rest. The ball is at rest and he kicks the ball. The ball has a mass of 10.73 kg and attains the speed of 74 meters per second in 11 microseconds. What is the change in momentum of the ball? What is the average force against the force of during the So, you know the ball is at rest. That means U is equal to 0 meters per second. Mass we know, that is 10.73 kgs. And value of D we also know, 74 meters per second. A T is also given as 11 microseconds or 11 is equal to the power minus 6 seconds. Now, change in momentum. What is change in momentum? M into B minus U. Okay. That means mass is given as 10.73 into B is 74 and Q is a 0. So, 794.02 kg is the first step. Now, force, we know change in momentum by time. So, change in momentum, we found that 794.02 into time is 11. 11 into 10 to the power minus 6 seconds. Okay. Uh, divided by that. So it can come as 72.18 into 10 to the power 6. Okay. okay. What is the ratio of SI to CGS unit of linear momentum? Ratio is SI unit of T, that is linear momentum, by CGS unit of T. So SI unit of T is kg meter per second and CGS is gram centimeter per second. And so that will be if you convert kg meter per second into centimeter per second, gram centimeter per second, and <clears throat> so that will be equal to 10 to the power 3 grams uh, into 10 to the power 2 centimeter per second. So that and that gram centimeter per second is so that will give us 10 to the power 5 is to 1 will be the ratio. A body on a cliff 293.56 height. Okay, so you that's something like this would be a meter. Okay. Drops a stone. On a, on one second later, he throws another another stone. There is a second stone after the first. They both hit the ground at the same time. With what speed did he throw the second stroke? G is equal to 9.81 meter per second. So, if uh, the if time for the first stone considered to be t, for the second stone it is considered as t minus one. Now s that is given as 293.56 meters is the same for both stones. And two is equal to zero meter for the second stone. Uh, uh, sorry, for the first stone. So zero meter per second for the first stone. Initial, uh, it is starting from zero. Okay, and gravitational uh, gravitation is acceleration due to gravity. That is nine point eight one meter per second stone. So we use the formula b square is equal to g square plus two g h. So g square is zero square, and two into g two into nine point eight one into uh, Second, uh, I mean, uh, S is what? 293.56. That's the distance. So that becomes well, how much? 5759.6972. So that will give us B is equal to 75.89 meter per second. Next, we use B is equal to G plus GT. 
So we will know as seventy-five point eight nine two zero plus um, GDG value. It is given nine point eight one T. We don't know, so we need to find out T. So T will be equal to how much? Seventy-five point eight nine by nine point eight one. Okay, that that will be seven point seven four seconds for first stone. Now for the second stone. So for the second stone, it is T minus one. So that means T is the time for the first stone minus one. So for the for the first uh, stone, the uh, this one, the time is, uh, uh, yes, the time is seven point seven four minus one. That is six point seven four seconds for the second stone. Now for the initial velocity of the second stone, S is equal to U T plus half T squared. So putting the formula, as we know, 293.56, U, V is zero, we know. So we don't uh, add the formula here. Into T is 6.74. Okay. So 6.74 plus half a GT square. So half into 9.81 into 6.74. Okay. So that gives us how much U is equal to 70.74 by 6.74. So that will be 10.5 Okay. Next, to we move on to the next question, question number nine. So, if action and reaction are equal and opposite, then how can motion ever take place? Action and reaction forces are not acting on the same body, but acting on different bodies. Okay. So, they are acting on, the, they are not acting on the same body, but acting on the different body. So, the body which is subjected to acting mode, action mode force, will be able to move. So uh, the body which is subjected to the action force will be able to move that body. Now, if a boy is running, then why can he stop standing? The boy is running. Boy is running, he cannot stop suddenly because he, it is due to the inertia of motion. That is, his lower parts of the body are still in motion. He cannot stop suddenly. If his body stops, I mean, whole body is in motion. So if he stops suddenly, that uh, first uh, first part, body part which would be coming to rest, that is his legs. But his fall, the upper portion of his body that is still in motion, then he will fall. In the front. It, it is so as when he will stop, his lower part will come to rest, and his upper part will still remain in motion. Okay. Now, when dropped from the same height, two bodies of different weight reach the ground at the same time. Why? We know G is equal to 9.0 meter per second squared, which is same for everybody, and G is independent of the mark of the body. So they reach the ground at the same time in spite of having different the G is same for everybody dependent of the mass of the body. so that's why if we throw two bodies from the same height they will reach the ground uh, simultaneously okay. now imagine a place in cosmos far from all gravitational forces and uh, frictional influences. Now, there is no gravitational force, no frictional force in cosmos of a body in life. Suppose an astronaut is that place, throws a ball. That place, he throws a ball. That uh, frictionless, gravitationless place. The ball will gradually stop and continue to motion in the same direction at the constant speed. So it will stop initially, but it will move on in the same direction with the constant speed which the body used to have when it was in motion. Okay. Uh, if the cosmos are uh, in if in the cosmos a rock is thrown from the rock, then the rock would have lost its weight and the temperature will drop to So what happens if in the cosmos a rock is thrown, then the rock will have would have lost its weight. So no gravitation, no friction. 
statement, it will lose its weight and the temperature will drop to one. So if the force is used to throw the rock, it escapes from all the gravitational forces. And due to, due to the no frictional force influences, there is no resistance between the rock and the person who has thrown it. So it allows the rock to float freely in the space. So it will float in the space without gravitational force, without frictional force, it will just float in the space. Okay, there is no resistance between the rock and the person. Say, who, who has thrown it? Who has thrown it, it will experience no resistance. Now the rock will float. So both the gravitational and frictional forces are zero force. Force is applied to throw a rock into the space. The rock will float immediately into the space without any external force being applied on it. This makes the rock continue to float in the space like the ship in the sea. So what happens? Gravitational and frictional forces are becoming zero there. The force is applied to throw the rock into the space. But so what happens? The rock will float indefinitely in space. It will, float. It will be flowing in the space without any external forces that can be applied on it. Then what happens? The rock will thus float in the space like the ship which is floating. Now let us distinguish between the force is proportional to acceleration and force is equal to. We know that from the force formula that mass into acceleration is force. Okay. So that means it is directly proportional to acceleration and also it's directly proportional to mass. The force increases acceleration. So zero acceleration means it's zero. So what is the relation between force and acceleration? If force increases, acceleration will increase and acceleration decreases, it will decrease. Okay? That is, but force is equal to acceleration means that since the mass is constant and hence it forces increases, the acceleration increases. Thus, it is said that force is equal to acceleration. So what happens? Force is equal to acceleration, we know, when the mass is taken to be as constant. So the mass becomes constant. Okay, so force increases, acceleration will increase. So function of the mass. So force increases, acceleration increases, force decreases, acceleration decreases. So force is equal to acceleration in that case. Okay. Now if the balloon build, filled with air, the compressed air exerts action on the balloon from all sides inside the balloon. Okay. From inside, it's compressing the air, compressed air which is inside the balloon, it will start and it will tend to flow out of the balloon. All sides it will pressurize. What is the direction of the reaction of the balloon? The reaction of the reaction will be outside air pressure. So that will be more outside on the walls of the balloon from outside. What happens? The compressed air which is inside the balloon that will start pushing out of the balloon. On the, it will press on the balloon wall from inside in all directions. But this is action. Now the reaction will be the air from outside. That will also press the ball, press the balloon uh, towards inside. So distinguish between acceleration due to gravity and universal gravitation constant with me. So first is acceleration due to gravity, universal gravitation constant. First of all, this is to define, it is uh, defined as the constant acceleration produced in the body when it falls freely under the effect of gravity. So when it is falling freely uh, in, under the effect of gravity, the acceleration that is produced in the body due to the free fall is constant. And that is known as acceleration. Gravity. Now it is defined as universal gravitational constant is defined as the force of attraction acting between two bodies, each with unit mass, whose center are placed unit distance apart. So 
So what happens? Universal gravitational constant is what? It is a constant. It is defined. It's a force. It's a fraction between the two bodies. So the force of attraction between the two bodies is equal to the mass. Whose centers are placed unit distance apart. Okay. Distance between them is one okay, meters or one centimeter. Its value changes from place to place. Acceleration due to gravity. Value changes from place to place. So, Earth it has some different value, and in the Moon it has some different value. Now, universal gravitational constant its value is same throughout the universe. Acceleration due to gravity's value depends upon the mixture and the size of the bodies. But universal gravitational constant says its value does not depend on the mixture and the size of the it is dependent on the size of the bodies, but universal gravity question does not depend on the size of the nature of the size of the bodies. So, thank you so much for watching this uh, chapter video. Go through the whole video, whole chapter. Lots of videos are based there in this chapter. So, please go through this. If you have any doubts, please write in the comment box. Please do subscribe my channel and also share with your friends so that they can also be benefited from these videos. And uh, if you are liking the video, press the like button. If you have not subscribed there, please do subscribe and stay tuned with me to have uh, good videos which will help you in your studies. Okay. And also do meditate before you start your day and become successful in your life, in your whole day. Okay. And be happy. Okay? So thank you. Thank you for joining. Have a good day.